welcome him to the show. And before we get into that, he's not alone. You know, it, it's the person that helped make him the great person that he is today is sitting alongside of him. She's an educator, a child educational specialist. She's a best-selling author. She's a sought-after speaker. Uh, she's an excellent mom. I've read these books, and she's a coach, too. Uh, please welcome the one and only Lauren Dungy is here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Right. I know Thank I know the here. secret to I his like success. There you go. No All doubt. right. And no he's doubt. a two-time Super Bowl champion with the Steelers as a player, with the Colts as a uh, coach. Um, he's a, a, a fo pro football Hall of Fame inductee. I mean, he's done it all, man. I could, not, I could run down his accolades. You guys know who he is. The one and only Tony Dungy is here. That's wow. Right. Right. Man. How y'all doing? We're doing, doing fantastic. Great. How about you? I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy right now. Um, I've always respected you as a coach. I grew up playing Little League football. I don't know if you might have read about my career. I would play <laughs> Pop Warner. I was a MVP of the Pop Warner League. Yeah. Oakland Dynamites, yeah. you know, right. and I passed off um, my opportunity to go into the Raiders camp, and I pursued hip-hop, and so yeah. here I am. <laughs> 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 But I, I love watching uh, your commentating, too, on TV Thank and you. the whole nine. And today we're here to talk about these excellent books that you guys read. I mean, that you guys wrote, Maria Finds Courage and Austin Plays Fair. You guys did it as a couple. You did it together, right? Um, and these are great books. And I wish I had more books like this growing up as a kid dealing with sportsmanship. Is that why oh. you decided to write it? Or? We yeah, did. we thought it was really important to uh -huh. have books that uh, had great storylines, but also a good message okay. um, in it. So mm -hmm. we, Tony and I got together and wrote these stories also because we felt that there was diversity missing mm -hmm. in good children's books. So we wanted our readers to open the book and see themselves mm -hmm. represented. And our stories include characters from all walks of life, and we use sports as the storyline because most kids play sports and mm -hmm. they can relate to the challenges and the problems that you incur when you're playing sports. You, that's interesting you say that because I know, I know I saw the interview that LeBron James did with Don Lemon and he talked about how through sports he was able to meet different people from different communities and different that's walks right. of life. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I personally grown up. I actually ran track too and, and we used to travel in the Bay Area to all these outskirts mm -hmm. of Oakland and yep. we meet a lot of Latino kids, uh, Asian kids, white kids and it didn't mean nothing that they were Asian, mm -hmm. Latino. That's right. Right? You know, um, and, and those are the lessons we should be learning. That's what we should take from sports, and that's what we try to emphasize in the books. Uh -huh. You guys got a little character in this. But I want to say uh, in the Maria Finds Courage, it's a, a, a little black kid who got braised like cornrows in his head, right? <laughs> one of our kids. And that little kid is one of us. <laughs> <laughs> We've got three kids in the, featured in the stories. Okay. Yes. And the stories are great. And the Maria Finds Courage, it's a story about a young lady. She she goes to move to a new area, right? And yeah. then she, you know, she's a great swimmer, um, but it's not swimming season, and her parents are encouraging her to join a local team, um, and she wanted to learn how to play. Was it soccer? soccer. It's soccer. soccer. Yep. She's a little hesitant to, to join in. She's not sure if she'll be able to play and understand the rules in the game of soccer. Um, her coaches help her. And, and we are the coaches, mm -hmm. and so we think we give excellent advice and support. Her parents also encourage her as well, mm -hmm. and she does. She dives in, and she has a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And many kids experience that. They're very apprehensive about doing something new. Mm -hmm. so they have to step out of their comfort zone and do that. And that's the message in it. And the interesting thing about that messaging, because she eventually, the, the coach, Coach Tony, tells her, you know, hey, you were great at swimming, right? Well, how did you right. get there? Yeah. Were you born great? Yeah. And she's like, nah, I practiced. Yeah. Well, if you practice, you could be great at soccer, too. You know, and, okay. and then she goes off and then she... And she does it and has fun and enjoys it, makes some new friends yeah. and finds a new avenue. Now, this messaging isn't just for <laughs> kids. This no, is, it's not. It's for adults, too. Correct. Like a lot of us, you know, we get stuck on that hamster wheel and don't want to step outside of our comfort zone to try new things, That's follow right. our passion. Sometimes it's out of fear. You got bills to pay now. You got dependents. You don't want to take those chances. But that messaging can apply to adults as well. Yeah, no, very, very much so. And that's what we hope that not only it'll be kids reading the books, but parents reading the books to their kids mm -hmm. talk about, yeah, what, what is going on in this story? What can we learn from it? Yeah, the, uh, the other story about Austin is really interesting, too. Because, <laughs> you know, you I, can relate to this one. Yeah, right? we can relate to this one, um, you know, because he played flag 
Austin was a flag football player, <laughs> Heather, in case you, you know what that is, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and um, his team is just sucks. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> right? Well, we didn't and say it like they that. They didn't say that struggle. in the book. That struggle. They, they struggle. 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 Okay. Starts with an S, Coach Tony. Starts with an S. <laughs> <laughs> so some kid comes up with this brilliant idea on how to cheat in order for them to start winning. And they mm. ended up winning, and it didn't sit well with Austin. And a lot of kids go through this a lot. Absolutely. You know, and through peer pressure, you see yeah. something that's being done wrong, you don't want to speak up because you're scared of the backlash that you might get. Same with adults. Exactly. You see exactly. something that's being done wrong, you don't want to speak up yeah. because you're scared of the backlash. And the kid convinced the team to kind of tie the flag in a certain way where it can't be pulled, and, and they went on to win games, and they ended up winning against one of the greatest teams. And the kid, you know, Austin. Now, here's the part right here where you reach a crossroads, especially growing up in Oakland. Yeah. Austin had a chance to let the victory go by and they could all go back and celebrate. Right. But he went up to the referee and he snitched. He pretty much yeah. snitched, right? Yeah. right? And um, he told on the kid. And his parents told him it was the right thing yeah. to do, right? That's right. Yeah. So you guys are, ant- you know, you guys are. Uh, you don't believe in the whole anti-snitching movement that, that <laughs> happens and uh, that you hear in the streets, don't snitch, right? It's important to do the right do thing, the right to thing. have integrity. To have yeah. integrity. And, and, yeah. yeah, it's difficult. So it's not, the message isn't not snitch, but it's do the right thing. Do the right thing. <laughs> okay. I like yeah. that twist, Coach. <laughs> 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 now, have you ever had like a, a, a player on one of your teams um, do the right thing and <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, no, I have, I, I'll give you one example. Way okay. back, I was the defensive coordinator for the Steelers, mm-hmm. and uh, one of the tech, TV technicians had seen we were playing the Denver Broncos. He had watched them practice, and he told me about a trick play they were going to run. And I knew it wasn't the right way to get it, but should I tell my players to be on the lookout for this trick play or not? And I said, that's not the right thing to do. I would be mad if somebody got that information on us the wrong way, so I didn't tell them. They ran the play, a halfback pass, and scored a touchdown. As soon as I saw it develop, I said, that's the play. They scored, but you know what? The Lord was so good, they had a penalty and got called back. (laughs) Do the right thing, man. Do the right thing. (laughs) We all have struggle, but make sure at the end of that you do the the right right thing, and the Lord will continue to bless you. I have a question about struggle, and for Steve and and you guys as parents, and for Sway as well, you guys have children, and you see, we're we're starting to see so many stories in the news now about kids playing sports. You know, you're hearing these stories about football and possibly getting hurt. You're hearing these stories about baseball and how expensive it is to have a kid that plays baseball in terms of traveling, which we didn't know. There's basketball basketball stories once these kids get to college they can't afford to eat because they're struggling right. and not being paid kids just got suspended from north carolina for so selling honest. sneakers right. you know trying to get money as a parent out there listening now if they have a child that's coming up and playing sports what could you suggest you guys if to adjust to this because it's wild what's going on right now wow that's a great question um i you know, i think it's important to be involved in sports i think sports is great discipline but you do have to play by the rules and there are challenges that were are going to come up and so you need to use your resources your help there are many adults coaches people Mm -hmm. to help you with the challenges that you are having or your child is having Mm -hmm. with the game but I definitely would encourage them to play and they are going to experience some things along the way, but you need to be there to be supportive and mm. help them. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we love sports. We have seven kids still in the house at home. They all play. We encourage mm. them to play. But you have to keep it in perspective. My, my first coach with the Steelers, Chuck Knoll, the very first meeting wow. we ever had, Coach Knoll said, hey, welcome to the National Football League, but don't make football your life. If you mm. make football your life, you're going to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. Make sure you keep it in perspective, have other things going, and that's what we try to encourage our kids. Enjoy the sport, but don't make it your life. Mm. You got seven in a second. We did seven. <laughs> 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 that point. <laughs> Ten all together. Ten all together. Seven. Busy household. Oh Busy my. household. <laughs> you shouldn't have to wash one dish, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. If you're washing any dishes, you're not doing something right. Uh, you'd be okay. Surprised. <laughs> okay. My news. Uh, Tony and Lauren, it's so great to meet you. you. Uh, Tony, I reference you a lot in the work that I do uh, in the sense of representation. And representation matters. And Lauren, you were talking about representation, and this book is about fulfilling a need for that. Yeah. Um, 
um, Tony, just as you being a black head coach in the NFL, um, we as black community and culture and fans of sports are always rooting for you. I was curious, when you're on the sideline, do you feel that pressure and responsibility to represent, not just for yourself and your family, but for culture? And then how does that translate on how you play the play I, calling? I did feel it early on. Um, you know, I came up as an assistant coach. There was only 10 assistant African-American assistants in the entire league when I, I started. And so you climb the ladder and you get an opportunity and you feel like, I have to do this well so other guys can get a chance. Uh, so, so there was a little bit of pressure, but then uh, after you get going, you feel kind of the sense of, hey, everybody's behind me. And our daughter was at Spelman when we went to the Super Bowl, nice. and they're saying, hey, this is awesome. This is why we marched. This is what civil rights was all about. We're, we're proud of you. We're pulling for you. And so you felt that. I, I got tons of letters, not just from the Indianapolis community, but all over the, the country when we went to the Super Bowl. So it's a sense of, uh, hey, you know, we're in this together. Felt like my uncle won the Super Bowl yeah. when that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uncle Tony won. Yeah. Uncle Tony a lot of won. People, yeah, people felt like, like that, man. Yeah. Um, you know, it must be special to have um, well, these guests here today, which it is, man. I actually had butterflies when I woke up this morning. Um, and, and the only time you're going to see our, zen, our senior VP of sports show up in this room, it's only for <laughs> special occasions. Yeah. And for him, he's actually, I didn't even have to tell him to sit down today, Heather. Yeah. Put on some headphones, Steve Cohen. He just showed up. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask this question on behalf of Raider Nation, because okay. Sway and I are unabashed yeah. Raider fans, of course. Absolutely. First team to hire an African-American to be yes, their head coach, yes, the were. great Hall of Famer, Art Shell. But I noticed last week um, a young man who argu arguably – Maybe the greatest quarterback in NFL history, Peyton Manning, went out to uh, Napa to work with Derek yes. Carr. Yeah. So as Raider fans, how happy should we be that the great Peyton Manning worked with Derek Carr? I think it will pay off for Derek Peyton as an unbelievable student of the game. He transmits that he loves quarterbacks and helping them out. I saw that picture as a non-Raider fan as an indie fan I'm uh -huh. like what is Peyton doing in the Raiders camp helping them but that's just his heart uh, he loves young quarterbacks and to help them out and I'm sure uh, Derek is going to benefit from that we got a call on the line we're going to open up the phone lines 888-742-3345 uh, MJ from Chicago what up hey what's up Sway? had to be had to be what's up God is safe how y'all doing doing great man say hello to Tony and Lauren coach Tony and coach hey. Lauren Tony, hey, Tony, hey, what's up, man? hey how are you broke, man I'm from Chicago man I remember that Super Bowl one y'all broke my heart but at the same time I was saying for y'all hey thank man, you but a quick question man just randomly uh no numerical order who are your top five quarterbacks and top five receivers of all time Top five quarterbacks hey. and top five receivers of all time. We'll, we'll just do quarterbacks, since, you know, uh, unless you your, your own personal list. Though, does okay, that, yeah, okay. personal. I'm going to put my man at the top, Peyton Manning. Peyton cause, Manning. Because he okay. got a Super Bowl for me, so I'm going to okay. put him at the yeah. top. Yeah. Um, John Unitas changed the game, uh -huh. so he's going to be number two. Uh, John Elway, in my book, was okay. so tough okay. to deal with. Uh -huh. um, so that's three. Four and five, I'm going to say – Dan Marino, uh -huh. four, uh -huh. and Joe Montana, five. Joe Montana. Uh -huh. Okay. Of course, the greatest lefty quarterback was Ken Stabler. Ken Stabler right. went in our, our Hall of Fame class. We got to meet his uh, daughters and his grand grandkids, and uh, he was tremendous, too. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of quarterbacks, uh, Coach, I remember your name stepping up even more, and everybody's like, wow, he really is Uncle Tony when you came to the mentorship for Michael Vick. And, and I'm wondering now, like everything we see because of social media, we have way too much information, but obviously we can't ignore the quarterback situation with Colin Kaepernick. And then on the other side, Dak Prescott, with both of those men just having opposite opinions mm -hmm. on the national anthem and the protest. Um, as a mentor, what would you say to each of them if you had an opportunity to speak to them um, as if you were coaching them on the same team? Well, first of all, I think we've got to come to a place in America where we can respect everybody's opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we can respect Colin Kaepernick for his stance and then turn around and say, okay, Dak Prescott says I would do it differently, uh, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I admire both of them because they stood up for what they believe in. And that's what you have to do. And I think the dialogue has to be how can we take Colin Kaepernick's perspective and Dak Prescott's and put it together and say how can we solve this problem and use everybody's thoughts uh, because the, to me, it's not 
he thinks this and he thinks this. It's here's the problem. How can we attack it? How how can we get better? Mm, here's the problem. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Is it hard for you as a commentator, though? I mean, I, you know, working on network TV to not address it? or No, or, I love NBC okay. has never no. told me what to say, what not to say. We actually did. We uh, had a program mm-hmm. last year with Kenny Stills and Michael Thomas from Miami. Why are you doing this? What are the issues? I thought we brought out their points really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a lot of criticism for it, but you know what? We said the country needs to hear this and hear what these young men are doing, not just the fact that they're kneeling for the national anthem, but what some of their solutions are and what they're doing in the Miami area. And it was awesome. If you were coaching today and and Colin Kaepernick came to you and said, Coach, man, really, I've been in shape. I haven't lost a beat, man. You know my resume. I'm better than a lot of the quarterbacks that are quarterbacking today. Man, can you give me a shot? What would you do? I would go to my owners and say, you know, hey, we need to do this, but it's going to take a strong team and a strong ownership that is not worried about the repercussions Mm -hmm. uh, and not worried about – that was the same thing you mentioned, Michael. Um, I I saw Michael Vick in Leavenworth Prison. I went to go see him, and he said, you know, I made some mistakes. I want to play. I want to get back in it. The more that we talked, we talked about the Lord and, you know, what was happening in his life. I could tell he was sincere. And I told some people, some of my friends, hey, this guy I think can benefit your organization. Philadelphia Eagles stepped out and signed him. They got hate mail. Uh-huh. I got hate mail. Um, but you know what? It was the right thing to do. He played well, and he's done some tremendous things in the community. Uh-huh. Uh, but you sometimes doing the right thing you have to be able to stand up and, and take that uh reper- yeah. repercussions you know? or sometimes like eric reed and colin kaepernick to do the right thing you got to t- nil yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and take on those repercussions i personally support what they're doing and we do a um, colin kaepernick recap every day on this show i even put a challenge out to media outlets so i don't feel like report enough about this collusion case that he has against the nfl um, I think it's a very important case, you know, and I put a challenge out for other networks to do the same and talk about it. But, you know, and I, I've said this before, if, if I were coaching now and my players came to me, here, here's what I would say. Rather than kneel for the national anthem, mm-hmm. let's find a way to give you guys a voice. I want you guys to take 10 minutes of my press conference mm-hmm. and let's talk about exactly what the issues are, what your concerns are, what your solutions are, and let's get that out. Let's work together to do that. Uh, I, I guess not many owners or coaches would volunteer to do that, but that to me is a way to work together mm-hmm. and say, hey, we want to solve this problem. Okay. All right, man. Man, Coach Tony is here. Coach Lauren, they're both here. We're going to open up the phone lines, man. Let's talk some football. Some more. 888 742 3345. Give us a call. They're available by going to teendungy.com and they're now released so you can get them at your local bookstores. Wow. Hey, but we got it, another thing. That's Go ahead, right. Tell we them. have yeah. one exciting thing that we haven't talked about yet. Your child can be in the next children's book. Oh. And we're having a promotion right now, mm-hmm. and you need to go online to teamdungy.com, register your child, and he or she can be featured as a character in a future Dungy storybook. Uh, August wow. 30th. And we would love that. Yeah, August, we do August, put deadline. It closes August 30th, but we're going to have a drawing. Pick one name out. They're going to be a character in the next book. That's huge. Can it you is. imagine being that kid? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, my child is 19. Can okay. I still? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> still cool? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, cool, man. There. I'll send you baby pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, can cut, you know, we can make this happen. All right. Uh, we're going to go to the phone lines. Uh, we have Mac from Cali on the line. Mac, go ahead. Hey, how y'all doing out there? Uh, I just wanted to call and thank Tony Dungy for all the work he has done in the NFL. Um, I'm I'm a diehard Niner, but I always appreciated seeing Tony Dungy, just his leadership skills. And I kind of take a quote and I teach it to my kids. If they're going to be followers, they better have a good leader in life. And that was one of the things that uh, Tony Dungy has shown me, how to be a good leader and to bring teammates together. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Wow, man. Mac, I'm glad you got a chance to talk with Tony. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're a citizen. Sweet morning. All right. Uh, Diego, what's up? He's in South Diego. Carolina. Good morning. What's up? What's up? What's up, bro? Not much, man. Um, I just had a comment uh, to Tony. Um, I see back in the day uh, when Tampa Bay won the ring, you know, he was fresh off of leaving and they gave Gruden the job. 
And I kind of saw the same thing happen in uh, Golden State with Mark Jackson um, mm. losing his position and Steve Kerr coming in and going straight in with the ring and getting all the credit for it. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how he feels about those ownership decisions with black head coaches in different leagues. Yeah, Coach Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's a saying in the Bible that sometimes you plant, sometimes you water, sometimes you harvest. And uh, I was there planting in, in Tampa, and that was my time. I got to harvest in Indianapolis, so it, it worked mm. out for me. You know, I was at that Super Bowl that year. I think it was in San Diego. Yeah, yep, yep, and, and I sat behind a goalpost, and I, I, I was so disappointed. I stopped watching football for mm. a few years off of that because the Raiders were running them same plays. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, man. Uh, it's like how you running yeah. the same series of plays in the. Yeah, it did, I just I didn't get it yeah, at that, that time. That was a tough day for Raiders fans. Was tough, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think, Heather? We, did we talk about um, betting and pro sports recently? Yeah, um, because New Jersey, the, um, but hey. my state of New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad I'm not coaching anymore. Yeah. Because when the fantasy football came out, yeah. mm-hmm. people started playing that. I would get calls. How come you didn't throw it to Reggie Wayne at the one yard line? How come you didn't throw it to this guy? <laughs> yeah. So I can't imagine if somebody lost $100,000 yeah. what, what right. they would be saying to you. Oh. Wow. Yeah. How you feel about that, though, betting with pro sports, you know? I think it's tough. I, I I don't like to see it because I think number one, people lose money when they shouldn't. But I, mm. I can see how much pressure that could put on players and mm-hmm. coaches. You know, someone comes to you and say, "Hey, man, I lost a hundred thousand dollars on you guys last week. You didn't come through for me." That that that, that could be tough. Mm. Or the flip side is, here's a hundred thousand dollars for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't yeah. come through. All yeah. right. Yeah. And, and now the NBA has a partnership with yes. MGM in Vegas. Mm-hmm. The NBA announced a partnership with a casino. It's all about that bottom line, man. Yeah. Who do you think is more vulnerable, uh, Coach Tony, when it comes to that, though? Because my perspective has always been is the college athletes who will be most vulnerable when it comes to the legalization of sports. And so I'm just curious what your thoughts are when it comes to the college realm of it. You know, college would be very uh, difficult to maintain that integrity because you're not getting paid. A lot of these guys are, are living you know, just hand to mouth. Hand yeah. to mouth. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of what the book is about. Austin plays fair. You you have to make decisions, and we tell Austin in the book, are you going to do the right thing or are you going to do what seems like it's best right now? And that, that's, that's what athletes will have to figure out. I, I need to do the right thing all the time. This guy's a pro, man. You saw he brought it back to the book. <laughs> <laughs> you saw how he did that? That was awesome. That's why he is who he is. Yeah. Right. I want to thank you guys. Uh, no, this and, has been great. Oh, cool, man. If you're ever in town and you want to come hang out and talk sports with us, man, and, and we could talk education. We could, All right. Uh, we could great. talk whatever. Yeah, we didn't you know, know the show was here. It you know, sounds like it's from Oakland. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. He brought it right back yeah. around again. Yeah. 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 That was great. I like that. All right. Uh, Tony Dungy, Lauren Dungy, thank you for coming by. I appreciate you all. Uh, We got Celebrity Wire up next. Oh, yes, Way. Um, Somebody is mad at Burt Reynolds. We'll find out who that is. And YG just walked in the building. He got his new album, Stay Dangerous. He's going to come join us for that Celebrity Wire. You want to talk with YG, 888-742-3345.